Hey, I'm Becca, the Content Director for Money 2020 Asia, and I'm joined today with Jonathan Larson. I've just stolen him from backstage after his main stage session um, here in Singapore. How are you doing, Jonathan? Doing great, thanks, Becca. Great. Um, so the first question I wanted to ask you, which is a bit cheeky to start with, why has Ping An given you, as an Aussie um, from a Chinese company, why the hell have they given you a billion dollars to play around with? Well, I think the first question is, what are they trying to do with their billion dollars? And that goes to why do we have the Global Voyager Fund? Uh, the fund is our corporate venture capital fund. So really, our mission is to access and source capabilities that uh, are complementary uh, and different from uh, the capabilities we have internally um, as a result of either what we have, our business development efforts, or our R&D. Um, so um, you know, we're really there to, to, to bring strategic value to the company. Of course, we care about financial return, uh, but uh, we only want to invest when there's real strategic value uh, on top of the financial returns that we can get. So um, that's the short answer for why the Voyager Fund exists. Um, and I'd say that so far, you know, we've made good progress um, in uh, deploying funds and finding really interesting companies that can add a lot of value to Ping An. Uh, and that's, that's a tall order because Ping An is a super innovative company and we're working on so many fronts on such a scale. So keeping ahead of that uh, is no mean task. Uh, but I think we're doing it so far. Um, as to why someone like me, well, my background is, um, uh, I think it's kind of twofold. Uh, one is it's pretty international. Uh, and secondly, um, while I've been on the business side for all of my career as a consultant, as a deal guy early in my days with Citibank and then 18 years with Citibank, eventually running their global retail bank, um, I've always had a deep interest in technology and I've been heavily involved in technology. So I, I think what was interesting to Ping An and to Peter Ma was sort of the, the, the blend of business and technology. So you know, he's got plenty of technologists. He's got lots and lots of people running his businesses. Building the bridge between the two is a fundamental capability that Ping An uh, needs and has. And you've now come up to a full year um, with the Voyager Fund, a full year of completion. So congratulations to start with. Thank you. So I joined at the beginning of May 17. So I'm almost coming up to two years. And I guess it probably took us six months to get the fund up and running. So in December, we, can, we completed our first full year of the fund. So thank you very much. Great. And tell me more about how that's gone and what we should be expecting from you um, in, in its second year. Well, I think um, we're very excited about the, um, the things that we've um, invested in and what we're looking at. Our first investment, you might recall, was in 10x Future Technologies, which was the SaaS banking platform um, set up by Anthony Jenkins after he left Barclays. And um, the great news, they've just done their Series B round, which we participated in. Uh, they uh, announced as part of that round a very large um, partnership at build contract and run contract with Nationwide Building Society in the UK. Um, and uh, they have um, uh, another very large client uh, uh, whose name hasn't been released yet or hasn't been announced yet. Um, and they have two more very, very uh, interesting, uh, very near prospects who've committed to them. So uh, they're at a point where they're really about to take off. Um, they've completed the first generation of their platform. And really what they're about is replacing the very complex, um, expensive and slow legacy infrastructure of a bank with a completely contemporary, flexible platform. So that's a really great example. The most recent investment we made um, was actually in China. Uh, and it's a, it's a um, med tech company in the uh, digital imaging space. And what they do is they take the, a picture of the back of your eye, your retina, and by scanning that and applying an algorithm, at this stage, uh, they and we can identify 35 disease types, such as diabetic retinopathy, which can lead to blindness if undetected, detached retina or partially detached retina, high blood pressure, arteriosclerosis, even, even down to some very rare but high impact diseases that if you didn't know you had it, you would really appreciate it. We actually had uh, one of their customers at one of the checkup centers in China that they operate through um, actually be detected with a um, partially detached retina. This guy was probably two or three days away from blindness in one eye, which would be irreparable. Um, the algorithm found it. Uh, when those serious cases uh, are detected, 
all kinds of alerts ring within the company, even to the CEO. They were able to track down the person and uh, get this person in front of an ophthalmologist and get them repaired. So um, it's really interesting to see how you know these things can have a very direct and very immediate impact. Wow, you sound like a doctor, the language that you're using there. How have you skilled yourself up in the medical world? Because coming from city, as you talked about, financial services, business and tech blended. How are you investing in health tech and well, biotech? Look, I think firstly, um, one of the great things about um, the role for me is the ability to learn entirely new domains. And so while, while I'd spent a lot of time in fintech with my friends and colleagues at City over the years, and City's you know, pretty well advanced and pretty well au fait with what's going on in the world there uh, through their own venture funds and other things, um, to be able to do this full time and to, to really look at the totality of what's out there is quite amazing. The health piece was entirely new to me. And we're very fortunate to have um, an old colleague of mine, uh, Marco Hoosh, who was a doctor in Australia, um, went and did an MBA, became a management consultant, and eventually did a PhD and became a medical and business academic in Duke, USC. And his last job was working for Penn State University, um, running their AI imaging labs um, in Hershey, Pennsylvania. So um, he's been a, he, he is our chief medical officer uh, and I think brings a completely different level of expertise, of science, um, of analytic discipline to you know, this very diverse world of digital health services that very few investors are well, well equipped to evaluate. Who came up with the title Chief Medical Officer? I think for... Marco and I did, it just seemed very intuitive. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the last time I saw you, um, I came to your offices in Hong Kong and you promised me that I could go to Shenzhen and see your tech team and I haven't made it yet. Well, please come. We'd love to host you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And just let me know when. Brilliant. So I will see you very soon in Shenzhen. Thank you, Becca. Thank you.